is it when you read what it was that we had asked for? What was it that made you think this is the perfect candidate? Um, she's because she's she's. It's not that she just started the group Cape Town Eats on Facebook um, and that it's grown to twelve thousand members, over twelve thousand members. It's that she works at it every day. Um, you know, it's one thing to set something up and then. Um, you know, sit back and whatever, but it's, it's, it's been her, I think she's worked on it more than she's worked on her own business. Um, and it, it's really grown to be massive. And it's just the, the energy and the passion she has for um, the restaurant industry, being a foodie. She's, she's probably Cape Town's top, uh, provides Cape Town's top foodie to us. Uh, she's been doing it for a number of years. I've known her 15 plus years, uh, around about there. We worked with each other a long time ago. Um, and it's just that she just like grabbed the bull by the horns with this Cape Town Eats group and it's grown and grown and grown and it's provided support and, and marketing and, and, and just getting one's name out there. Uh, starting off with like restaurants and chefs and, and then, you know, artisanal bakers and fresh produce. Everyone started to deliver fresh vegetables and people just, you know, pivoted the 2020 word of the year. Um, and it, it expanded and, and, and it covered not just a restaurant doing home deliveries now. Um, yeah, it, it, it really expanded and, and um, it was amazing to see. And, and she just, it, it, she, her passion for it and her energy for it and her time that she's given of it. And you see the appreciation from all the people and um, she's just run with it and, and it's just kept growing and growing and growing. So. Um, she hasn't stopped. She didn't set something up a little holly hobby and then lose interest and whatever. Um, and that's just massive respect for her. And she did it for others. She didn't do it for herself, which is just the most beautiful story around lifting others. Yeah, she didn't exactly turn her company into a, well, I'm also baking and look at these products or I'm also doing whatever. Um, it was purely for the industry. Um, and the people that she knows and she loves and she works with and, you know, through, with her tour, she visits all these restaurants and bakeries and coffee shops and, and chocolatiers and, and, and what have you. Um, and she just felt for them. She genuinely felt for them. And um, it, it's, yeah, I mean, it, it, it's obviously grown and, 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 and as she's the figurehead, you know, there is some, some goodwill coming back at her, et cetera, but it wasn't done for that. Um, it, it was really done in the goodness of, it came from a good place. It, it came and from a good, authentic, honest place. Um, has she and, inspired yeah. you to get involved somehow or for you to do something similar? Uh, I, I've recently uh, seen something that, I, that uh, a Joburg colleague has done um, and I'm giving it some hard thought, you know, really I need to maybe get up and out there. Um, I'm stuck in a, in, in a, as we all are, a bit of a rut where we are, um, unable to pivot to the domestic market as, as tour guides and tour operators with vans, with, with wheels. Um, it, it's so difficult to pivot to the local markets and you kind of like, well, do you try and make the effort or do you just hibernate some more um, and, and, and sit it out? Um, and that certainly was my feeling in the early months and we're coming very, very close to 12 months. March is, is, is five weeks away, 26 March or whenever the date was. So, um, uh, yeah, it's it's just been in a bit of a bit of a funk, a bad funk. Um, but um, yeah, I mean, I have seen a very very good idea, and it it, it kind of did identified with it. And I thought, well, hold on, you know, let, let let's maybe uh, investigate that. But for the time being, um, I've actually a lot of my energy has been into assisting my wife with her company. She did manage to pivot, and she's pulled me in to help her. Um, so yeah, I don't want to do something half-heartedly, um, but it, it still doesn't mean that for those of us that are, aren't the pennies of the world, um, for, for us not to admire and respect what she's gone and, and achieved. That's beautiful. Thank you so much. <music>
most probably I was the first to do food tours in the city. And so food tours overlap with um, the tourism in terms of having one foot in the tourism world and one foot in the food world. And basically, um, yeah, wanting to um, always champion those and my discoveries in the Cape. And I'd always done it in terms of my Cape Fusion tours and my online media, but I didn't have such a huge audience at the time. Anyway, we found ourselves in lockdown, unable to work. So started the normal way of thinking, how can I help people? So I was making sandwiches. <laughs> so along the way, I started realizing that all the, the chefs and all the guys that work in the cafes and everything else had all shut down and were starting to look at sidekick businesses. And very few of them had any expertise on marketing. And they also didn't know how to shout about themselves. So the first thing I thought about was start a website. So I started capetoneats.com and sat, because I'm not very technical, and sat for weeks trying to figure out how to do this template WordPress site and to put it out to them to say, listen, mate, people need to know who you are. You can do a whole page here. You can introduce yourself, tell them your background, tell them your sidekick business, and here would be an entire platform for you. Um, but that turned out to be a little bit of a hard sell. Quite a few of them still not very good at talking about themselves and selling themselves. And at the time I started seeing people starting up groups and started realizing the power of a Facebook group because with the algorithms on Facebook and on Insta and all the others, as all of us with little business know, they basically chop you at the toes unless you're paying for Facebook and Insta. And most of these guys didn't have the money for boosting, but and not even for boosting very much. And the power of a Facebook group is it actually bombs into your feed. So it has high, high, high reach. And so I decided to start the Cape Town Eats group on Facebook and started pimping it all over the place because that's how they say you, you grow your group by bombing it onto other people's groups saying, well, this group's not working for you join mine and share everything that you're finding all over the place. To the extent I got kicked off the main food group called the Cape Town Restaurant, the bad, good, the bad and the ugly. And let me tell you, there are a lot of ugly things on there. So a positive initiative should not have got me buffed off the main group. He finally let me back on. But gradually by starting to share, people started to realize the ethos. And the ethos is that with Facebook, there's a lot of negativity out there. And none of us from tourism or food need negativity at this stage. We need cheerleaders. We need people who are fighting for us and we need to get it out there. We also need to be able to communicate what everyone's doing and get our message out. And so one of the first things I did with that group is I said only positivity allowed. Anyone who's nasty and negative gets buffed off there immediately. And it's a group to share what everybody is doing within the Cape Town community, the Winelands community. And I'm trying really hard to get everybody to post everything from the tourism tour guide that's living out in Bloberg, that's making her rusks. Here's an audience to go, here's me, I'm making my rusks. And all of her friends to hop on and go, oh my gosh, Lisa's rusks are incredible, incredible, incredible. And if you see 20 incredibles, you go, Lisa, please deliver rusks to me and gardens. And so it's a group of, in, of endorsement and sharing that information because how many people know that Lisa's making rusks in Bloberg? How many people know that Candy is making an insane chili sauce around the corner? And it's just sort of steering them gently to say, say where you are, where you're making it and acting as the cheerleader and the guide to just get that message across because at this time, I think the awareness has grown to not just support the big businesses, to focus on who the people are and to cheerlead who our people are and people want to leave a footprint. So it's become the most amazing little group because everybody wants to buy local and they want to buy amazing product and we're tired of the stuff we're finding at a pick and pay or Woolworths. And it was the most amazing opportunity because who doesn't want to buy from one of Cape Town's top chefs who'll turn up himself at your front door with the most incredible meals? I mean, one of the examples is a guy called Dion Ventergrass. He's a top, top, top chef. 
He's making tacos and selling them on Taco Tuesday from Mountain Man around the corner from us in gardens. And if you guys didn't know about that, you'll need to go. So here's a win-win between tourism products and food products happening all over the place. And because of my background in tourism, a lot of the tour guides hopped down and told each other. And so we're having a synergy of ways to keep people's businesses up and running. Also with so many restaurant closures, changes, people don't really remember. I mean, it's been a year since some people went to a restaurant. All it takes is for their favorite steakhouse to go, yoo-hoo, we're here and we've got a special. And for the 13,000 people in my group to go, Ooh, remember going to the Chapman's Peak Hotel for calamari and beer. Why don't we do that next week? So it's the little reminders that are proving to be so strong at the end of the day. And it's just, you know, giving people ideas and inspiration because it's quite hard. You sit at home and you don't know if this restaurant's still open. You, you kind of, you know, out of touch with it. And so it's really, it's, it's impacted on a lot of small businesses. It's impacting on the restaurants and all of it is an integral part of our industry at the end of the day. And so it marries really well. The more of the restaurants we can keep open, the more we'll have something for people to return to when they come and they travel to South Africa. And food being my world, I don't want any of these guys to close. So in any which way we can support, we're trying the absolute best we can. And so, yeah, any of you are on it, who want the information and to follow what's going on in Cape Town, please join because sooner than we know it, people will be vaccinated and they'll be popping back to South Africa. And you're gonna be sitting there twiddling your thumbs when they ask you food questions. So if you're following our group, you'll be up on what's going down in Cape Town and the Winelands. So it sounds a little bit like this has become more than a side hustle for you. I think you are now going to have to uh, do the, pursue this full time since you're so good at building this community. Is it taking a lot of your energy? It's taking a huge amount of my energy. The issue is, is of course, one doesn't earn any money on it. So um, at this stage, it is a passion. They, as the food industry, are just as distressed as we have been in tourism. And so you can't turn things into monetization very easily. So both the Cape Town Eats website, which has pretty much started to evolve, there were always restaurant websites, but there was nothing that geolocated all the little guys. So now we've got Katie from Hout Bay who makes the most amazing cupcakes. They look like proteas and roses. And Katie has been booming with business because your guest house isn't with her cupcake business. So basically it's a gift, you know, the, both the website, the website in the future when people aren't distressed can monetize, but there's no way to monetize at the moment. And the group is also, it's a gift and it's trying to create a community and it really has pulled everybody together in the industry. And it's pretty much got most of the chefs on, a lot of the restaurants on, and it's a very powerful little community. But yes, it does. It takes an incredible amount of time for both the group and the website. Um, but while I've got a lot of time on my hands, why not? We might as well leave our footprint of growing and being the cheerleader. I'm, I think of myself as the cheerleader of the food industry, but as one of the um, one of the top Cape Town food photographers who also works in PR, and she calls me the food fairy. <laughs> Oh, I love that. The food fairy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Up, should I call you the fairy or the cheerleader? What do I mean, what is your background? Were you always in tourism? Did you start in food? Tell us a little bit about you. Uh, interesting question. So basically, I was very um, planning to go business world. I did a business science marketing. Marketing is my strength. And I was advertising industry for a very long time. And that's why when I look at what people are doing, it's very hard for me to not be terribly critical and go, dude, what are you doing? You need to put what your proposition is. You need to tell people who you are. People are all about connecting with people and making it real now. And so it's just feeding that feedback into them. And also from my side, I know what you know, people are kind of looking for 
and just inspiring them. So yeah, very much from a business science marketing. I then moved on to Ogilvy, uh, sorry, to TBWA, Hunt Lascaris, and then to Ogilvy and Mather. And at 30, I thought, no, I'm too old for this. Um, in Montreal, you laugh, but the advertising industry is average age 21. So 30, you're a fossil, and you've got to be as passionate as they are. And I thought, no, what do I want to do? And I knew I wanted to live in Cape Town, so I packed my little bag from Jersey, arrived down here, and decided um, I was going to do what made me happy. And I looked at it, and the four things that were pretty much my keys when I thought, what makes you happiest in the world? And it was Cape Town, it was traveling, it was people, it was food, and it was wine, five. And so I thought, a food and wine to operator, I'm never going to feel like I'm working again. I'm going to have a serious amount of fun, and I can always go back into advertising or into the marketing world. What have I got to lose? I'm going to go big. I'm going to put a big budget behind it. I'm going to have a fleet of vehicles and I'm launching. Anyway, who knew your travel industry was very different from where I came from? You know, who I just threw money at it, ads into food magazines, wine magazines overseas, and not a single booking. <laughs> it's all about relationships in the travel industry. Very different. And so it took me a long time to build those relationships and to build up overseas agents who would become my cheerleaders on that side. And I've had a lot of angels that have been my cheerleaders along the way. And that's how I built it, one little agent and one ground operator at a time. So very much the old fashioned way. I watch all the youngsters come in and it's a very different way that they operate. Very much instant bookings, um, bookings coming in at 11 o'clock at night. And I say, thank you, Lord, for all these wonderful agents that I've had on my journey. So I've had cheerleaders all the way, uh, all, my, all the way along. And in turn, I've been a cheerleader for the Cape, for our industry, for where we are, for everything that we have here along the way. And so it's kind of been a chain reaction. <laughs> How does it yeah. feel when you hear that somebody actually took time out of their day to nominate you as someone who lifts others? I think it's, it's really, really, really special. And I'm very, very pleased they caught the essence of what I'm doing with that group because I've just literally been a cheerleader of every single person that's come on there right from the beginning. And so a lot of the businesses have grown and we've, we've worked very closely together and formed amazing relationships. So thank you to those that nominated me. I'm so pleased you caught, yeah, caught and, and felt my endless cheerleading for everyone else that's out there. What's next, Pamela? What have you got up your sleeve or in your apron at, pocket? At the moment, I, you know, just before the second surge, I started getting some um, food tours off the ground. Um, very, very slow on the bookings, but nonetheless, um, reinventing for this period, both my food tour of the city. I also, because of all of my interaction on the group, I started meeting some of the artisans out on the peninsula. And it's amazing, you know, we as tour guides go whizzing around the whole peninsula trying to fit in the tick list of activities that we never paused and caught our breath to realize what passionate artisans are sitting out there. And so I launched a Taste the Peninsula food tour, absolutely loving it. I'm not going to Cape Point, I'm not going to Penguins. I'm eating sourdough almond croissants, doing chin tastings, stopping and meeting wacky um, brewers from Botswana who set up in Long Beach where you can go and fill your two liter beer for a hundred rand and take it home with you. There are larger than life characters and cheese makers and everybody else sitting on the peninsula, which just makes it really, really fun. So that was supposed to be a lockdown tour, but for sure that one is going to go into the future. And so you literally see a crossover from the peeps that I met through my initiatives, crossing over and forming new tours. The Taste of Cape Town, which is the lockdown food tour 
I'm running at the moment has been quite a departure from my last food tour. So the main food tour covers a lot of the local food. However, this one tells the story of who rose up and what changes they made to save their businesses and how amazing some of the places that, are, that have opened over this time or how they completely changed themselves. The one is a wine bar that turned itself into a kick-ass little spot where you, you can go and get artisan breads. They've got great Rosetta coffee. You can shop for meals. They're supporting all the other little startups with the pizzas that they've got there. You've got takeout meals from La Cucina. So there's been a really coming together and a supporting of artisans and a lot of new openings. I just think people got balls. They really have balls opening businesses over this time. And it's just been amazing to see how people have innovated and changed and what's popped up. And so because of the group as well and of researching and popping out of my hood, we walked a lot during lockdown. So we kept walking and walking and walking and we would see how things were changing and innovating. And I live in gardens, so this is very much my hood. I'm walking it all the time. And so, yeah, they, they've been, you know, changes of springing up on that as well. And so it's just amazing to see the figures coming down because the first couple of little local bookings are coming in. And you would think it would be bookings from Josie people, but oh no, it's Cape Town people, Cape Town actual locals that are coming on these tours. And it's incredible that 99% um, have not discovered not one of the places that I take them to during the day, um, which just makes it really, really fun to just open people's eyes and see what's down in alley, what the changes are, and just, yeah, just to get out there and um, talk to people again and taste delicious food. It, it's the little things now that really make us happy. You know, a delicious, tasty, beautiful pastry while we're out walking on, on Lion's Head area, it's just, yeah, it's, there's nothing better. Uh -huh. And we have you to cheerlead for us. Thank you so much, Pamela, for lifting yeah, up yeah. an incredible story. I love it. <laughs> Thank you for having me on here.